Hello everyone. In this video, we'll be discussing about the word governess. Right, so word governors are basically the simplest type of gravity controlled governors. They are centrifugal governors, right? So word governors, Again, I'm telling they are the simplest types of centrifugal governors and centrifugal governors are the governors in which the action is dependent upon the effects which are caused due to the masses of the fly balls, right? So the construction is almost similar to that of the centrifugal governor. We have got these fly balls, right? These are the masses which are causing the centrifugal effect. These masses also known as the fly balls or the fly ball. They are attached to these arms. These arms are of negligible mass. And these arms, there are two set of these arms. This is the upper set of the arms and this is the lower set of the arms, right? So the upper set of the arms, it is pivoted to a spindle at a point O. We usually call it point O, so this is the spindle. And the lower set of the arms, it is connected to the sleeve. So this sleeve is basically causing the upper and the downward motion the sleeve moves upward and downward when these arms they rotate right now this spindle is driven through the bevel gear which is connected to the engine right and the lower part of the arms it is connected to the sleeve that we have already discussed it moves according to the movement of the balls and these are the two stoppers stopper one and stopper two this is basically to control the movement of the sleeve there is a limit upper and the lower limit it cannot go beyond that to control that motion we have kept these two stoppers right and this sleeve it is connected to the throttle wall with the help of bell crank levers we know these levers they change the direction of motion right usually through 90 degree and this throttle wall it controls the supply or the flow of the working fluid right now we'll see the working of the word governor. Now see that this diagram is for the reference. We have already seen this diagram. There are two possibilities when governor is working. One, when the load is decreasing and one, when the load is increasing. So when load decreases, what happens? Speed increases. Now when the speed increases, the speed of rotation of spindle, it also increases, right? It moves at a higher speed and thus the centrifugal force increases and these balls they move upward right now when these balls are moving upward they're also causing the sleeve to move upward due to which the throttle wall it decreases the supply of fuel that means it comes to almost of course it cannot come to a perfect horizontal condition otherwise the flow will stop so it comes to almost horizontal position as per the requirement or we can say it goes towards the horizontal axis in such a way that the fuel supply is decreased now when the fuel supply decreases the output of the power it also decreases now when the reverse of this happens when the load is increasing what happens speed decreases so when speed decreases what happens the speed of rotation of the spindle it also decreases and the centrifugal force because centrifugal force is what m r omega square so when n is decreasing omega cos decreases so when centrifugal force decreases balls they come downward because it is moving at a smaller speed so balls they come downward right now when these fly balls if they come downward the sleeve also moves downward due to which throttle wall it opens up it comes to a vertical position at it increases the supply of the fuel due to which the power output increases and more fuel is given to maintain an, an average or the mean speed. Now, there are generally three types of watt governors. The basic construction remains the same with small variations. Right? The first one is the simple type or it can also be called as the pent governor. Why it is called as the pent governor? Because the upper arms are pent at a point O right the working of all of them remains the same that balls they move upward or downward whenever the spindle revolves right 
the lower arms they are connected to sleeves and it causes the control of the throttle wall and the fuel supply so we are not taking into consideration all the things that we saw in the earlier diagram we are just to understand the basic uh, construction and the working we have just kept this part for study right now the second type is the open arm type of governor in which you see the pivot here the pivot was at point o so pivot is bit offset right and the upper arms they are connected to a link which we have named ef this part efo is basically an in this is an imaginary line right to say that the link is such that if you uh, extend this line and if you extend it they appear to meet at a point which is o the third type is the cross arm type governor in this the pivot is of course offset and the arms and links they are somewhat in the cross position right can you see the cross position and they are connected to a horizontal link which we have named fe right now in all of them we can see the construction the other construction remains the same right now let's see further now here we have done a derivation to determine the height of watt governor this is basically what we determine to design a watt governor right now what is the height of the governor this right this is the vertical distance from plane of rotation of balls this is the plane of rotation of balls right to the point of intersection of upper arms these two are the upper arms so the point at which these two upper arms are intersecting we call this point as o right and this distance is what it is called as the height of the watt governor right so basically in what governors the controlling force is provided by the gravity so gravity is playing a very important role so what we are doing we are making the free body diagram we are taking one of the ball let's say we are taking fly ball a and we have made a free body diagram to see what all forces are acting on this ball a so one is of course the weight gravity is playing an important role mg we are considering that the mass of the ball is small m right there is this tension t in the upper arm right so we are denoting it by capital t this we have shown and this upper arm is making an angle of theta with the vertical axis right so this we have again shown here the angle theta now if we resolve this t because it is at an angle we resolve it so we get two components which is t cos theta and t sin theta and we know this is the centrifugal type of governor so the governing factors are of course the gravity and the centrifugal force so because this is this ball is rotating at certain speed so the centrifugal force is there which is mr omega square and it is of course acting outwards so this we have shown here outwards now when we balance the vertical and the horizontal forces there are two vertical forces t cos theta is equal to mg and the horizontal forces which is t sin theta is equal to mr omega square and let's say this is equation 1 and equation 2 now when we are dividing these equations so it comes out to be t sin theta upon t cos theta is equal to mr omega square upon mg now t cancels out here and m cancels out right so what are we left with then theta is equal to r omega square upon g now if you look in this triangle if you look in this triangle what is theta theta is r which is the radius upon h which is the height of the watt governor so 10 theta is r upon h so we put the value of 10 theta in equation number 3 So it becomes r upon h is equal to r omega square upon g, right? R cancels out, right? We uh, interchange the positions, so we know h is equal to g upon omega square. G is 9.81 meter per second square, and omega is 2 pi n upon 60, right? N is the RPM. So you put the value of omega from this into this equation. You do the calculations, and what you get? the formula you get is 89500 upon n square in mm all the calculations all the measurements in this derivation are done in mm
right? This is this is an important factor. You have to keep in mind what system of units are you using while derivation plus while doing the numericals. Now, what does this equation tells? This equation tells that it tells the relationship between the height of the governor and the speed of rotation. So it says that as the n becomes larger, right, the variation in h becomes very small. Thank you.